smoke on. morning guys this is day two that's uh was a uh, or wake up call uh, pilatus beautiful airplane coming in and this is gonna be our uh, day two of our trip we uh, slept not so good we had some uh, noises overnight I think come from somewhere there or somewhere there or somewhere there look like a symphony but uh, yeah we have a full day ahead lots of stuff going on we're gonna go to the uh, field station and then we're gonna go to the desert I'm gonna probably go to the desert take the uh, stuff out of the airplane and set up camp and then go to field station lighter so we don't have to carry a lot of weight and then hopefully you do a bunch of flying. Es difícil disimular lo que pasa por mi mente cuando te tengo de frente. Esas ganas de tocar ese cuerpo lentamente divertirnos malamente con tu piel yeah, 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 yeah. Ay, hasta que la noche se acabe bailamos salsa y reggaeton hermosa y a tu cuerpo lo sabe que bailas con esa pasión si lo haces como eso lo mueves yo me imagino es una sensación chica sé que tú tienes la clave baila conmigo esta canción baila conmigo tú no bailas con cualquiera Hermosa tu cara la mera mera Me encanta el look de la nueva era Dile a Mike que ya le encontré nuera Que esa nena ya es mía, la loca para afuera Así que tranqui, tranqui Que ella se lo goza con un funky, funky La beso y brinco como monkey, monkey Es tan dulce que le dicen pinky, pinky, bebé Eres mi miel, mi Anabel Tu favorito y tu perro fiel Ese nivel en que te cargas Se te ve tan bonita en esa tanga Dale, muévelo, muévelo, muévelo Cuando cuento el trip en mi tajón de flow
más lunáticos. <risa> Another spot, another tent to set up. So at this point of uh, day two, I realized that my microphone uh, plug was not connected to the camera. So from now on, I'm going to try to uh, do a little bit of a voiceover and uh, not talk too much. Uh, Brian wants to do a uh, drag race practice. I have never done it. I asked him if I could join him. So off we go. I was pretty surprised how quickly I, I accelerated. Uh, my airplane is, uh, I think I have 20 horsepower less than Brian. He has 120 and I have 100 horsepower. So the whole idea is to go to uh, two miles towards the end of the line. I land after the line come to a full stop, turn it around 180 degrees and do the same thing uh, and land after we uh, the line that we started off. My airplane has no brakes. After I put the 29 tires on it, I uh, basically have no braking power whatsoever. It is really hard to know where the line is and with the desert it's really hard to judge where the floor is. So he tried to do as much as he could, but he wasn't too bad. I think it did pretty good for my first time. It was pretty awesome. So down below is the uh, field station. As you can see, you, can, you have the uh, road that you can land to. And on the back of the uh, gas station, there is also a landing strip. And that's what I chose to land. So after landing it, we decided that uh, we wanted to get some fuel and our friend with the helicopter was taking off so we asked if he could take a look on the road and we could taxi from the uh, dirt strip all the way to the uh, gas station so we could put fuel on it. We knew that the weather was coming and we wanted to continue flying so we want to fuel it up uh, and uh, have some uh, flying in the afternoon and avoid some of the thunderstorms that were coming up. And I won't lie, uh, it was a little bit of nerve-wracking uh, taxing on the road without being able to see if the cars are coming uh, ahead of you and behind you. 
Luckily, our friend uh, with a quad, Slim, was uh, looking ahead of us, and the helicopter, uh, he was looking at behind, and it was looking ahead of us. Some of the uh, signs, I could swear that I almost hit them. I didn't realize them until they were so close. And uh, it was a little bit of a sketchy side, but uh, we made it safe to the gas station. This particular sign on the right side, I almost hit it. And the one on the left, someone already hit it for me. That was pretty close. And not knowing exactly uh, what the wires were and the signs, I chose not to land on the road uh, until I could taxi on and take a look at them. And later I found out that uh, that's not the best way to land. Uh, towards the uh, other side of the gas station is the best way to uh, take off and land, which is there's a little bit more space and there's less wires and signs. Yeah, look at this wire right on top of the uh, video now. You can barely see it. And once we get off the road, in a kind of a feel of relief, and we uh, park right next to the uh, fuel pump and fuel it up. And the guys at Fuel's station were uh, super nice, and they had the uh, a lot of fuel there for us. And after that, is just uh, have a milkshake and uh, enjoy a burger. That is just incredible. I mean, there's no, there's no way you can describe what it feels to be like in a place like this until we get here, you know? Yeah. It's so overwhelming. Yeah. That is so cool. This is awesome. I'm intrigued about the black thing, man. I want to go check it out. Yeah. Let's go check it out what the black thing is.
As you can see, a bunch of thunderstorms are building up. Quite a few of them, three or four in sequence, one after the other. And believe it or not, the little black dot that we could see seven, eight miles out, you can see coming in on the left side of the screen. It's a little tiny dot. It's a guy stuck in the mud in the motorcycle. Now we knew the storm were coming and basically if he didn't get out of there he was going to be underwater. And we also couldn't land next to him because if he was stuck, we'll probably be stuck there as well. Just a few miles away from him, we spotted this uh, camping van, which originally we thought it was his. So we um, tried to understand what was going on there, so we did a couple of flybys around him, tried to let him know that we were going to uh, uh, try to get him some help. We really wanted to uh, land right next to him, but you can see uh, the dark color indicates that it's uh, nice and moist and wet and could be muddy. So we didn't want to take the risk again to uh, be stuck there. So after a few passes around the van, we uh, decided that the uh, floor will be nice and firm and we decided to uh, land next to them and see if there's any way they could help the guy with the motorcycle at least uh, get him in the van and uh, ditch before the thunderstorm comes. Look at this thing. It is dumping down big time. We're gonna have probably to go over around there or behind it. Hey puppy! Hello puppy! Hello! 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 Going on, guys? Hey, how you doing? Good, how are you? Good. Hey, puppy. <laughs> so, did you guys see the guy there? Uh, just, the, we just heard about him that yeah. he's stuck over there. Yeah, he's stuck there, and, and there's no way that he can get out of there, it seems like. It's pretty pretty muddy. I wonder if we should go save him. But at least, but at least uh, I mean, if, hey. if, if it wasn't for you guys here, he would be in bad shape oh, because there's be nothing around. Right. That's what we thought he might have been living, actually. Yeah, we thought, it, we thought it was his van or uh, a pup. You guys just camping here? Uh, we just parked here for a few hours. Yeah. 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 We need to, we need to watch for this thing coming in. Yeah. Oh, we gotta. Yeah, 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 yeah. We gotta watch out for this cell. Yeah, we're camped over towards the spring. Yeah. All right. So it looks like the yep. guy is gonna get help from these guys yeah. here that's these nice. guys are just camping here and look at the size of that cell coming in <laughs> that's nuts and it's water and dust and the tents are probably going to be soaking wet all right i think it's time to head back yeah as you can see uh, things got a little bit hectic. The uh, winds were blowing uh, at least 25 miles an hour and we decided to just get out of there as quickly as possible and start dodging all these cells around and um, unfortunately the uh, guys on the van decided to ditch and never help the guy in the motorcycle. 
And the funny story is, um, after three or four hours of flying, we all head back to camp. And this is must be seven, eight o'clock at night, or even more. A guy in a motorcycle suit shows up on a campsite, and that's the guy. And he walked all the way from that place he was to our campsite, which could be at least 15, 20 miles. And he was all happy and good spirits, and uh, he even brought uh, some drinks for us that he had in his pocket. And we uh, hang out and we talk over the fireplace. So um, it was all good. She was all happy. So there was a happy ending there. I think next day, uh, Ty uh, gave him a ride to his spot and his motorcycle was all good. And uh, he uh, moved on. We knew we couldn't come back to the uh, campsite because the dry lake bed at this time was basically a lake. So we just decided to uh, keep flying. We had plenty of fuel and we had a lot of uh, dry lake beds to explore and we just pointed where the weather was nice and we flew for you know three four more hours and I finally realized that my plug was uh, disconnected and I ended up connecting and regain audio feed close that yeah let's get out Can't get over how cool this thing is. <laughs> that is too cool. That is definitely like in the middle of nowhere. I think that's the prettiest so far. Yeah. This is very like calm and yeah. secluded. Nice wow, this is so beautiful. Yeah. This is smooth too. And we just heard that the guys at the campsite are completely under mud and water. Yeah, they're going fishing. They're going fishing. Dang, it rained at a campsite and it got muddy and it's bad. It's really bad. It's really bad. And we're just flying around. Alright, so it uh, looks like while uh, Gary and I were flying around, a lot of thunderstorms popped up and one massive thunderstorm hit the dry lake bed and everybody is underwater. It flooded everything. Nobody's getting in and out. So it looks like we're gonna go check it out and see if we can land on the grass. Uh, there's a piece of grass. Hopefully I can land there. I don't know if I can. If we can't, if I can't, then uh, I don't know. We're gonna have to go someplace else. Fingers crossed. All right, we made it down. Man, this dry lake bed is not dry anymore check this out it's basically a lake and we didn't we didn't know if we could land here or not so we ended up uh, landing over there it's a patch of grass which is very very muddy and it just made a massive mess everywhere the tires are all messy the bottom of the wing is all messed up so that's the way it goes all right so uh, this is the end of day two and I'm pretty beat up we flew quite a bit found some really cool places and uh, unfortunately the uh, connection of the um, 
audio on my camera was not plugged in so a lot of a voiceover anyways thanks for following along if you uh, liked go ahead and subscribe and uh, click the little uh, bell button there and I'll see you guys in the next one thanks bye